hypocritical. Because the same governments who are attacking the United States for the program were, I can tell you from firsthand experience, delighted to have whatever information that resulted from successes in that program. So I, I think there's enough hypocrisy in, to, to go around here. But you expect from the country that's waging a war on terror, in the name of uh, everything that Western civilization stands for, really, you can't go into a war like this to preserve, namely, ostensibly, to preserve the very values, the very heart of Western civilization through compromising the very essence of Western civilization. Well, I can't I disagree with you on that. I, I'm, I'm not much of a Western civilization guy, Yosri. I'm more interested in defending the United States of America. But the United States taxpayer has given, uh, uh, through, through his taxes, the United States government an enormous military capability. And what we have seen throughout this war has been a reluctance on the part of Democratic and Republican presidents to use that military force to end the problem and come home. Instead, we've addressed this as a law enforcement problem and as a, some kind of a legal problem. And I, I think that's why this has gone on so long. And as far as I'm concerned, we're faced with a military problem, Yosri, and we, it's going to get much bloodier before it's over because our enemy is determined and, and very capable. And how do you propose to deal, for instance, with the dilemma of uh, uh, people in Guantanamo now, um, especially, especially the so-called 14 uh, high-value targets, uh, um, Sheikh Muhammad, the likes of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Ramzi bin al-Sheba, and the rest? Well, ideally, if we had treated them as prisoners of war, we could throw them in the stockade as we did Germans and Japanese, and they would sit there until we decided the war was over. Uh, the problem we face, you talked, Yosri, about Western civilization. And the Western community today faces a problem it has never faced before. And we have yet, after all these years, to even talk about it. And that's the fact that these prisoners of war, when they're released, a goodly percentage of them go back to the battlefield and fight us over again. The West has never encountered before an enemy who, when released from a prisoner of war camp, goes back to fight us again. Uh, the Japanese went into the electronic business. The Germans built cars. Many of the people we've released from prison, we've either killed on the battlefield or recaptured. One of them is now the, the operational chief for uh, Al-Qaeda in the Arab Peninsula. It's a very new situation, and no one has talked about it yet. Uh, I, I, okay, I, I'd like to go back to some of those um, incidents uh, under Mr. Clinton. Um, for instance, in uh, your book, Imperial Hubris, you mentioned one of those that's related also um, in a sense, to, to, to our uh, region, um, you say uh, about, and it's, it's, it's basically about uh, uh, Mr. Clinton, President Clinton at the time, uh, I think it was in, uh, on the 20th of August in the year 1989, or, or 98, I'm sorry, uh, 98 that he, uh, he, called, uh, uh, the, he, he called the CIA from Air Force One, and then when he went back to um, the White House, he called uh, Prime Minister uh, Blair, Tony Blair, and the uh, Pakistani President uh, Musharraf, and President Mubarak of Egypt. Why, uh, President, I, I can understand Tony Blair for obvious reasons. Uh, I can understand uh, Musharraf uh, for obvious reasons, but why President Mubarak? You know, I don't know the answer to that, uh, Yosri. That, that was the attack on Afghanistan, uh, on, the, on the training camps at Host, 20, right. 20 August 1998, is that correct? That's right, absolutely. Yeah, I think probably President, 
President Mubarak was probably informed because uh, our government in, regards Egypt and Mubarak as pivotal to our um, uh, uh, prospects, our policies in the Middle East, and such a major military event, uh, we would not want Mr. Mubarak and his government to be caught su by surprise because of that. More than the Saudis? Uh, you know, I don't know if the Saudis were informed or not. I suspect they weren't. The Saudis are, when it comes to Osama bin Laden, you have to keep in mind that the Saudis, at least until 2004, 2005, were more on the side of Osama bin Laden than they were on the side of the United States. Until Al-Qaeda attacked in the kingdom in 2003 and 2004, the Saudis never did anything but stonewall the United States. They never helped us a bit regarding bin Laden. So I think more than likely, the Saudis would have been the last people on earth we would have warned about a strike on bin Laden because we were afraid someone in their government would warn bin Laden. Um, after the attacks uh, on 9-11, uh, President, President Mubarak uh, said that uh, he personally warned uh, America and uh, that uh, the Egyptian uh, security also sent some credible uh, information to the United States, to their counterparts in the, uh, in the United States. Uh, what exactly were, were these information and do you think it could have actually contributed to uh, the prevention of 9-11? Uh, of Yosri, I don't, I don't think anything short of the United States reaching out and killing Osama bin Laden or capturing him before 9-11 would have stopped the attack. Uh, I found, and I worked very closely with the Egyptian Security Service for a better part of a decade, they were very forthcoming in giving us information that was very useful to, to planning operations against Osama bin Laden. Uh, as far as I know, and I've never met the gentleman, but President Mubarak authorized that cooperation. Uh, but at the end of the day, Yosri, what more information do you need than someone standing up in public on the 27th of August, 1996, and declaring war on you? If that doesn't get your attention, probably no amount of intelligence information is going to, uh, going to get your attention either. But obviously the CIA uh, benefited a lot from uh, the Egyptian knowledge and the Egyptian know-how. The, the Egyptians were, were um, I, I think, essential uh, in our operations. They were very forthcoming. And from the very beginning, uh, they made the most sense. They said, uh, you know, Mr. Mike, why don't you, the United States, capture or kill bin Laden and end this problem before it becomes something we can't end with just taking out one man? Uh, and they were right from the very beginning. Okay. Uh I'd like to focus a little bit now on uh, Israel because it seems that uh, you've paid uh, a certain price for speaking out. Um, uh, in defense, I have to say, of your own country, and you invited everybody in your own country to put its own interests first um, in front of any other country's interests, including uh, uh, Israel. Indeed. Uh, in one of my interviews with you um, earlier, you said uh, to me that uh, Israel is pulling the United States from its nose when it comes to its um, foreign policy. Is this still the case? Oh, absolutely the case, Yosri. We went to war in Iraq uh, because of very pro-Israel uh, advisors around President Bush. We had no reason to attack Saddam. Uh, it was an unprovoked war that really uh, did bin Laden's work for him. Uh, today, 300 million Americans could wake up tomorrow morning and find that one foreign leader, Netanyahu, has got them involved in a war with Iran and probably a war with Iran that would spark a war between the United States and most of the Muslim world. It is an unconscionable position for U.S. politicians to have put their country into. Israel is utterly worthless in terms of uh, United States interests. It produces nothing we need. It gives us nothing we need. 
It does nothing but involve us in a religious war it wants to have with Islam. And at the same time here in the United States, it corrupts our political system through its US citizen supporters. It, it uh, controls our media to a great extent. And it is uh, an albatross on the United States. And uh, uh, that also uh, was indeed your opinion, uh, whether it was under uh, President Clinton or President George W. Bush, or what's new, uh, at least to uh, many people in our part of the world, is that you hold the same opinion also about President Obama. You know, I, one thing that surprised me, Yosri, about the way the, the um, uh, Obama administration was received in the Muslim world was no one paid attention to the fact, I guess, that the president's chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, is uh, a very much a pro-Israel U.S. citizen. In fact, during the first Iraq war, he left the United States to, to work with the Israeli Defense Forces. So the idea that somehow Obama's administration is any different than, than uh, 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 Mr. Bush's or Mr. Clinton's or any other U.S. administration in the last 30 years is, is wishful thinking on the part of Muslims. It is no different at all. How many Michael Schuyer in, in, in America are there now uh, in terms of holding this position? In other words, do you think that the uh, attacks uh, of 9-11-2001 um, have contributed to any extent at all to the changing of uh, the views uh, held by uh, people uh, um, in the streets or people actually in the press or people like yourself? Um, is America changing at all on this front? Not at the official level, Yosri. I think if you look on the internet and various blogs and very discussion, discuss, various discussion groups and the publication of an increasing number of books, there is dissatisfaction in the American public uh, with the relationship with the Israelis. In addition now, there's also an organization that is publishing declassified U.S. government documents proving that, that Israel has been conducting uh, espionage in the United States has been using funds to keep the media silent about criticism of, of Israel, of uh, smuggling weaponry and other uh, 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 weapons-related materials out of the United States. So there's more talk about it now. But in, in terms of the federal government, um, we just had a resolution that was signed by every member uh, of uh, every Republican member of the House uh, supporting uh, Israel if it decides to attack Iran. So uh, I, I have to take my hats off to my hat off to the Israelis. They have run an intelligence.